Many years ago, when we first started using the technique of nutrigenomics, which is, if you like, is a science which looks at the impact of nutrition on gene expression patterns, we found that one of our products in particular, which we now call AT001, but which was formerly called Cellplex, uh, seemed to have the ability to alter uh, the activity of biochemical pathways, which in humans are associated with several um, serious illnesses. A case in point, uh, in terms of important pathways being altered, uh, was the pathway which is thought to be partially responsible for Alzheimer's disease or neurodegeneration. We showed these results, our initial results, to the late Dr. William Marksbury, who is a very renowned researcher at the Sanders Brown Center on Aging here at the University of Kentucky. Uh, he was very intrigued by what we had found and he agreed to test our product in one of his mouse models of human Alzheimer's disease. So this mouse model basically contains genes in its brain that are known to form the structures uh, responsible for Alzheimer's disease. Um, the genes in question produce what are called amyloid plaques, which are, if you like, clumps of protein, which, which um, are one of the hallmark pathologies of Alzheimer's disease. So uh, he, he tested uh, this material, AT001, in his mouse model, and the results were quite startling. We can see on the left-hand panel in the, in the black and white photographs a representative electron micrograph of a brain slice from a, a mouse which did not receive the material in its diet. So this was a, a mouse fed a control diet. Uh, on the right-hand panel is a brain slice from a mouse who did receive AT001 in its diet. Uh, as you can see, the dark areas in the left-hand panel, they are the actual amyloid plaques. They uh, are very much diminished, or in fact, uh, very barely visible in the right-hand panel. This material did seem to either stop or degrade amyloid plaques in this particular model. The overall uh, average decrease in amyloid burden in these mice was of the order of 45 to 50 percent, which was really quite remarkable. And in fact, Dr. Marksbury commented that, that he had never seen anything, anything quite like it. Um, so the, these were uh, very, uh, if you like, um, interesting and very exciting results. Um, but they were not the only results which he recorded in this study. In fact, when he looked at other markers in the brains of these animals, he saw that uh, this material had brought about a very significant reduction in oxidative damage or destruction of genetic material. In particular, uh, it reduced oxidation of both DNA and RNA. Now, there are many, many publications which attest to the fact that DNA oxidation and RNA oxidation are one of the early uh, causative factors uh, in Alzheimer's disease and in neurodegeneration in particular. So he was quite excited by these results also. And, and as you can see, in terms of RNA oxidation, we got an almost 60% decrease. So again, this was quite a, a remarkable result. Now, when Dr. Marksbury published these results, okay, in, in, and this was as far back as 2009, he uh, published these results and he made some, some very, very, um, if you like, enthusiastic comments in support of use of this material. Um, and as shown here, he said that overall, uh, our data suggested that um, this material right, could reduce both amyloid beta burden and also oxidative damage, which uh, suggests or support a role for it as a potential therapeutic agent in um, neurological disorders which are associated with increased oxidative stress. So in other words, Alzheimer's disease. Um, so where, where, did we, where did we go from there? What are the causes and effects that we were looking at? Because we saw the reduction in plaques, we saw the reduction in, in DNA and RNA oxidation, but what was the root cause and the, and the if you like, um, the reason why we were seeing those? Well, a second observation we had made as part of our nutrigenomic work was that we saw an increase in gene expression patterns which indicated to us that we could significantly increase mitochondrial activity. 
Now, uh, for anyone who's not aware of what mitochondria are, they're those tiny little energy factories which uh, everybody has in, the, in their cells which make up their bodies. And depending on cell type, you can have, you know, few copies or you can have many thousands of copies. Um, and these are the little structures which are responsible for producing energy. So in, in, in simple terms, they are essential for life. So uh, they keep, keep the cells running. Now, it may surprise you to learn that when you get even uh, modest perturbations or um, uh, defects in mitochondrial activity, uh, these defects and, and decreases can be associated or have been associated with a whole variety of illnesses. I show some of them here. Um, there's a list of at least 50 or more. Uh, I just show some of the ones which may be familiar to most people here. You can see that Alzheimer's disease and type 2 diabetes feature prominently, but there are also many other disorders and illnesses uh, which people will recognize as being potentially life-threatening. Uh, furthermore, these are not restricted to just physical uh, illnesses. There's also a number of, of mental or neurological disorders associated with uh, mitochondrial dysfunction also. So we saw that uh, we were indicating or getting results which indicated increases in mitochondrial activity, but where was the actual measurable proof of that? And, and I can show you a good example here, one of our experiments where we took a soluble extract from this uh, dietary supplement and we applied it to cell cultures of neuronal cells. Uh, so these are, uh, if you like, human uh, nerve cells of the type that you would find in, in uh, brain. We applied the material in tiny quantities to uh, the cell cultures and we saw a very, very significant increase in mitochondrial activity. So in the left-hand panel of this slide, you will see a pinkish color and that pinkish color is actually uh, a measure of mitochondrial activity. As you see, the intensity of that color increase, that corresponds exactly to increases in mitochondrial activity or ATP production, energy production. Um, you will see from the graphs on, on the right of those photographs that um, we saw as much as a 250% increase in mitochondrial activity when we applied this extract to those cells. The um, increase, as well as being quite robust, was also long-lived. It was still measurable 24 hours after application. And furthermore, in the right-hand panel, you can see a protein. Uh, we measured a protein called PGC1-alpha in these cells. PGC1-alpha is known to be directly responsible for mitochondrial um, biogenesis or, if you like, mitochondrial reproduction, the, the, um, if you like, the controlling the numbers of mitochondria present in cells. An increase in this indicates that, yes, indeed, you would expect to get. Uh, a, a corresponding increase in, in mitochondrial number and activity. Where have we gone from there, from that point? Because we have interesting results, very exciting results. Where have we taken it in the intervening period? Um, we have, in fact, completed a full phase one uh, human clinical trial. Now, a phase one trial is uh, concerned mainly with safety of use for humans, making sure there's no adverse events or, or uh, bad side effects, that the material is perfectly safe to use. W we actually tested this. We, we ran the trial again at the Saunders Brown Center on Aging here at the University of Kentucky. This used a, a group of healthy human volunteers, elderly subjects, which received either AT001 or a placebo or sugar pill. Um, the material came through with flying colors, even if we went up, when we went up to high dosages, uh, as much as, um, I think, 400 milligrams per day, we saw, we saw no adverse events. Um, so the safety aspect was, was well uh, proven, if you like, in this particular study. But let me show you some of the other observations we made as, as, as side observations in this trial. And one of them is very, very interesting. I show it here. Uh, it's indicating that we did indeed see a decrease in uh, markers of inflammation or inflammatory response. Now, there have been many studies and publications concerning the important role of inflammation 
in uh, once more the development of Alzheimer's disease and other neurological disorders. A very powerful um, mediator of inflammation is a molecule called prostaglandin E2, right? It mediates a lot and modulates a lot of inflammatory response. When you see high levels of this material, it indicates that there is significant inflammation going on. And as you can see from this graph here, we saw a very, very significant and linear decrease in the levels of this material, both as we increased dose and went throughout the, uh, the duration of the study. So this was a very nice measurement to get indeed, and uh, suggestive again that we were affecting processes, right, uh, and getting results which indicated we were perhaps having a very beneficial effect on uh, neurological health, the, you know, maintenance of neurological health in these subjects. A second observation we made, which was equally, if not more, um, exciting was uh, when we looked at the spinal fluid of these patients at the start and at the end of the study, we noted that in the patients um, or the subjects which were receiving AT001, that there was an, in fact very little change in the levels of, of beta amyloid protein in the spinal fluid. Now beta amyloid protein uh, is the protein which is responsible for forming those amyloid plaques I showed you in an earlier slide. So it's present in brain and in cerebrospinal fluid. Um, so in the AT001 subjects, there was very little change. So in fact, it stabilized levels of the, this uh, amyloid protein. However, in the group receiving the placebo, there was a, um, a very marked decrease in the levels of amyloid beta. Now at first glance, you might think that, well, the placebo must have performed better than the actual AT001. But in fact, when you think about it, if there's a decrease in spinal fluid levels of, of beta amyloid, where has it gone? Uh, in fact, it probably has gone into brain to form, form those clumps or aggregates. Uh, it has formed plaques, perhaps. So uh, this result in itself is indicative that, yes, well, maybe we are indeed, you know, in these subjects having a, an impact on, on plaque formation also. Um, furthermore, uh, though I don't show the actual graph here, we saw a similar stabilization in levels of another type of amyloid protein, which is called amyloid beta 40. And that is uh, the amyloid which is associated with vascular dementia. So it's possible that, uh, you know, in, in terms of being able to maintain a healthy neurological condition, we're, we're affecting not just uh, the systems or, or processes which lead perhaps ultimately to Alzheimer's disease, but other forms of neurodegeneration. Um, so in fact, that brings me back to, again, to Dr. Marksbury's published work and one of his concluding statements, which, in which he said that um, these data, again, suggest that uh, AT001, or Cellplex, uh, could be uh, a useful neurological, um, neuroprotective agent, um, which could be possibly useful in the prevention of Alzheimer's disease. And it's on that basis that we really want to offer this material for, for use to the public. I mean, I take, I take the material out of my own free will. Many people here in the research department do also. Many people in this company take it. Um, we feel that this could be a very useful dietary supplement, right, for the maintenance of, of a, um, a healthy and functional neurological system, right, and maybe uh, of benefit in maintaining cognition and learning. Um, it's probably very well suited for anybody in middle age who has a family history of uh, Alzheimer's disease or other neurological neurodegenerative diseases in their family. Or indeed, if anybody is interested in maintaining, you know, uh, apart from their physical fitness, perhaps their mental fitness, it could also be a very useful uh, supplement to consider taking.